ahead. Welcome back to ABA Exam Review and the continuation of our RBT practice question series where we're going through the next set of questions together and breaking them down. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Please like and subscribe. Check out btexamreview.com if you haven't already for our combo pack and practice exams. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard. Study hard. Let's get going. The carnival game stipulates that the contestant must knock down all the five milk bottles in order to earn a stuffed animal. Each contestant will have eight throws to try and knock down all the milk bottles. What type of reinforcement schedule are the contestants on? We have a reinforcement schedule question. When we have reinforcement schedules, we're thinking in terms of fixed or variable and then ratio or interval. So fixed and variable has to do with the amount required. Does it stay constant or is it changing? And then ratios have to do with responses. Intervals have to do with time. So let's start with, is it a ratio or is it an interval? Well, we know that the carnival game says the contestant must knock down all five of the milk bottles in order to earn the stuffed animal. So in order to get reinforcement, what must a contestant do? Well, they need to engage in the response, the correct response of knocking down milk bottles five times. So we know this is going to be a ratio schedule. And how many responses are required? Five. So we've got a ratio five. We know that for sure. Now, is the number of responses required changing or is it fixed? Well, it's fixed. Every single contestant, every single time, has to knock down five milk bottles before they get reinforced. They're not going to get reinforced for four. They're not going to get reinforced for six because after five, it'll reset. So the number of responses required is never changing. So what type of reinforcement schedule are they on? A, a fixed ratio of five. Yes, for every reason we just talked about, the number isn't changing. It's based on a number of responses and specifically five responses. What about B, a variable ratio of five? If the question had said they must knock down all the milk bottles within three to five throws, which would be some sort of average or spread, that would be variable. But this isn't variable, B is out. What about C, fixed ratio eight? Well, eight isn't the number of responses. Eight is the attempts. They have to engage in the correct response five times. And then D, variable ratio eight. Well, for all the same reasons B is wrong and C is wrong, D is wrong. So the answer here is going to be A, fixed ratio five. Jake has an interview today at 1.30 p.m. Around 10 a.m., he starts prepping for the interview using interview questions he found online. Although he is happy with the answers he has prepared for the practice questions, what is essential if Jake wants to perform well during the interview? So let's think about this a little bit. We have Jake who wants to do well during his interview. What does he need to do? What does he need to make sure of? What do we know so far? Well, he's been preparing for the interview using questions he found online. And he's happy with the answers he's prepared for the practice questions. Now think about if we were to teach a skill in practice, what would we want to see from the learner? We would want to see the learner take that skill from practice into the natural environment. And we want to see Jake do the same thing. So what is essential for Jake? A, response generalization. Response generalization is when you have multiple responses in the presence of a single stimulus. We're not too concerned with Jake changing up his responses. If he's happy with the answers he's prepared, then we want Jake to use those answers during the real interview. What we need Jake to do is B, generalize across stimuli, meaning he can go from practice, maybe he's practicing in the mirror or he's practicing with a friend, into the real interview with the actual person who's interviewing him and engage in those questions. He can generalize his responses or his response across multiple stimuli. So each answer he can engage in or give in the presence of many different stimuli. We need Jake to generalize across these different stimuli he's going to encounter. What about C, non-contingent reinforcement? Jake isn't going to perform the non-contingent reinforcement. There might be reinforcement available, but Jake isn't the one we're worried about giving reinforcement. Jake needs to engage in the response. He needs to generalize those answers across a bunch of different stimuli. And then D, resistance to extinction. Well, Jake's behavior isn't necessarily going to be on extinction. We're not sure how the interview is going to go. 
but he, we know they're going to ask him questions. He's going to answer those questions, and then they'll give him feedback or continue asking questions. Resistance to extinction doesn't really apply in this scenario. What we need Jake to do is take those answers he has, those answers he's prepared, and then take them into the interview and generalize with the new stimuli he's going to encounter. Jerry has been attempting to make a hole-in-one on a golf simulator for almost 30 hours. It's taken nearly 3,000 swings to accomplish his goal of making a hole-in-one. At what rate is Jerry swinging the golf club? We have a rate question. How do you find rate? For a rate, you need frequency and you need time. You're going to find your frequency. And you're going to put it over your time and get some sort of ratio. In this case, what is our frequency? Well, we know Jerry's taken about 3,000 swings to accomplish his goal of making a hole-in-one. So what is our time? The time is 30 hours. So to find a rate, we need to put that 3,000 over 30. And what is that going to give us? A, 100 swings per hour. Sure, if you reduce that down, you're going to get a rate of 100 swings per hour. And so when you're looking at rate, that word per is a pretty clear giveaway. Now, what about B? Because we always read all of our answer choices. 3,000 swings per 30 hours. B is the same thing as A. It just isn't reduced down. But 3,000 swings per 30 hours is about the rate we have here. Even though it says nearly 3,000 swings, we have a frequency. We have a time. So we have 3,000 swings per 30 hours, given our information, because we're going to reduce that down to 100 swings per hour. And then C... 3,000 swings. Well, 3,000 swings is a frequency. It doesn't have a time. Remember, for rate, you need both frequency and time. And so given that we have an imprecise count and an imprecise amount of time, we've got to go with the best answers here, which would be A and B. 100 swings per hour, 3,000 swings per 30 hours. Remember, rate is simply frequency over time. There are several fireworks shows around Las Vegas a few nights ago. I woke up at 10.15 p.m., 10.45 p.m., 11.55 p.m., and 5 a.m. If you were taking into response time data, how many data points would you record for my waking up behavior? Into response time question. What is into response time? Into response time is the time in between two behaviors. And so if you're looking for how many data points you need or you're going to record, you have to figure out what behavior are you measuring. In this case, we are looking at waking up. And so our latency would be what? Latency would be the SD to the first response. So the SD is a firework. First response is I wake up at 10.15 p.m. Then we measure into response time from the end of the first response to the start of the second, the end of the second to the start of the third, and the end of the third to the start of the fourth. How many data points have we collected? Well, we've collected one, two, and three. So our answer is going to be three. Now let's look at A, four. If you said, how many times did I wake up and we're looking for frequency, you might choose four. B is our answer. We have three into response time data points. Two really wouldn't apply here. And if you were looking at latency, then you'd likely have maybe one data point because you'd be looking at the time between the firework and you waking up. But what we're looking at is time in between waking up. That's what into response time is. Time in between responses. It starts, measurement of into response time starts at the end of the first response to the beginning of the second. So again, one data point, two data points, three data points. You were trying to buy tickets to go see your favorite singer in concert. You check their website and see that tickets cost nearly a thousand dollars. You then go and check StubHub and see that tickets are $300 cheaper on StubHub, so you get tickets from there instead. Now, you always check StubHub first. Why? All right, we've got a consequence question. For consequences, we're looking at how future behavior changed. In this case, you check StubHub, something happened, now you always check StubHub. So your behavior increased, you were reinforced, right? Very simple. You were reinforced, your behavior increased in the future, reinforcement occurred. Then we have to ask ourselves, was it positive or negative? Meaning was something added, was something taken away? Well, what happened? So you 
ch you check the website and see that tickets cost a thousand dollars. You go to Ch StubHub and you find tickets that are three hundred dollars cheaper. So the consequence of going check StubHub was much much cheaper tickets. So buying the cheaper tickets is now positive reinforcement. You were able to secure these much cheaper tickets. So in the future, you're going back to StubHub to see, can you find those cheap tickets? So A looks like our answer. B, negative reinforcement, the consequence wasn't removed. You checked StubHub. As a result, you got cheap tickets. Nothing was removed. You received or you were able to purchase cheap tickets. And then C and D, your behavior increased going forward, meaning it can't be punishment. Punishment decreases future behavior. Since your behavior increased, it has to be reinforcement. So why do you always check, stu check StubHub first now? Well, because of positive reinforcement. Although there are disadvantages to discontinuous measurement, there's a time and a place where discontinuous measurement can be useful in service. When might you want to use discontinuous measurement? This question came up a few times a couple weeks ago, and people were Wondering, why would we use discontinuous measurement if it's less accurate and can lead to poor data? Well, like anything we do, everything is individualized, and there's a time and a place for everything. Why would you use discontinuous measurement? What is the purpose? A, when you have limited time or resources available. Let's say you can only observe behavior for 20 minutes. Well, discontinuous measurement might come in handy here because you can use some sort of interval recording. So if you have limited time or resources, discontinuous measurement might be your only option. What about B, when you're measuring the behavior of several learners? Think about our momentary time sampling and play check. If you have to look at several different learners, it's going to be hard to continually measure all their behavior. Discontinuous measurement might allow you to measure the behavior of several learners. And then C, when the behavior of interest happens very frequently. So if you know that behavior is happening all day, every day, you might not need to continuously measure it. A sample might be enough. Now, are all these options going to often give you less accurate data than continuous measurement? Yes, but that's a disadvantage we accept going in. Like all of our interventions, all of our measurements, it's all individualized. What is our goal? How can we accomplish our goal? If we can use discontinuous measurement to accomplish our goal, it's good enough for us, and we use it. If not, we approach it in a different way. But just remember, everything you're learning has a time and a place. There's no cookie-cutter approach to any one client. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you aren't already for all of our updates. Please check out btexamreview.com for all of our study materials. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout-out. Work hard. Study hard. See you soon.